This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the uh, second lecture on statements of cash flows. In the first lecture, I briefly introduced it and uh, to the pro forma, but now to make hopefully complete sense of it all, and all the little individual bits you could be asked, let's work through a full example together. If you turn to the third page, uh, and there's an example there, example one, Blair Limited. And what we've got there, uh, we've given the statements of financial position in each of two years, at December 2008, and of course the previous year, 2007. And it all looks fairly conventional, but look at one thing there, look at the cash balance. Last year the cash was 64,000, this year it's only 45,000, it's fallen by 19,000. Now that's fine, except an ordinary shareholder, not an accountant, just an ordinary shareholder who doesn't understand accounting in full, they get these statements and they're going to say, well, the cash has gone down 19,000, but they're going to say, why? Because if you look below, we've got the statement of profit or loss, and the profit, is, they've made a profit of 61,000. Now, it may be obvious to you what's happened, but to an ordinary person, they're going to say, well, where's all that money gone? We made profit of 61,000, and yet the cash has fallen by 19. Now, of course, we understand accounts, and there's one obvious reason you can see straight off. Look at non-current assets. Non-current assets have gone up a lot. So clearly they've been spending a lot of money on non-current assets. I'm not therefore surprised the cash balance has fallen. But, you know, we are accountants. To make it clear to uh, ordinary users of the statements, this statement of cash flows will show what money's come in and what's gone out. So we've got the... Uh, two statements of financial position. We've also got the statement of profit or loss for the year. A couple of notes at the bottom. Let's make a start. The first heading, you've got the pro forma on the previous page and we had a quick talk through it. But your first heading, cash flows from operating activities. Which, as I said before, uh, the cash flow from operating activities um, is basically the cash we've generated from our profits. So we start with our profit before tax. Uh, and if you look at the uh, statement of profit or loss at the bottom, the profit before tax was 100,000. Now, okay, there is going to be tax payable, and uh, we will show that, but we show that separately. <coughs> but for the moment, <coughs> excuse me, for the moment I'm not interested. We need to make various adjustments, and the first adjustment I'm going to make, if you look at the statement of profit or loss, it says profit before tax was 100,000, but the line above, the company's paid interest, and the profit before the interest was actually 101,000. Well, interest is a cash payment, but as you'll see, it's something we show somewhere else on the statement. And so we add back the interest that's been charged. The actual profit from operations was 101,000. Now again, the interest that's been paid, we will show, but we'll show somewhere else. Uh, and in fact, um, very often we just start with the operating profit of 101, the profit before interest and tax. However, why isn't that the cash profit? Why haven't they had cash of 101? I outlined in the last lecture, there are two reasons, and two reasons, therefore, we make adjustments. And the first thing we'll do is we'll adjust for non-cash items. Uh, 
The first of which, the one that always is going to be there, is depreciation. In arriving at the profit, one of the expenses would have been depreciation. More depreciation, the lower the profit. But depreciation, we don't actually pay out any cash. And so the cash profit will be higher by the amount of depreciation. We add it back. And how much depreciation was there during the year? If you look at note one, it says expenses include depreciation of 40,000. So the 101,000 profit was after an expense of 40. Wasn't cash. The cash profit is therefore 40 higher. I won't do a, a subtotal yet, uh, because the other thing you're always looking for, the only other thing that's going to be relevant as far as a non-cash item is concerned in this exam, is going to be any profit or loss on the sale of non-current assets. All right, if we sell any non-current assets, obviously we receive cash, and we will show that, the cash we've had, but that comes under another heading, cash flows from investing activities. But the profit or loss itself, the profit or loss isn't a cash flow at all, but it will have appeared in the statement of profit or loss in arriving at the profit. Well, how much profit or loss was there here? Look at note two. During the year that there have been sales of non-current assets for 30,000, so we received cash of 30, and we will show that under the next heading. Now, the assets sold had originally cost 50 and had a net book value or a carrying value of 20,000. Well, you'll remember from uh, way back the lectures on depreciation, the profit or loss on sale it's the difference between the cash we receive of here 30,000 uh, and the book value, the carrying value of 20,000. So in this particular question, there's been a profit on sale of 10,000. And as I said a minute ago, the profit itself isn't a cash receipt. The cash receipt is the 30,000. The profit isn't a cash flow, but that 10,000 will have been included in the profit from the statement to financial position. Well, I want a cash profit, so we need to remove that 10,000. So those are the only two adjustments for non-cash items that you'll come across in this exam. Always add back depreciation. Uh, profit or loss on sale. Remove any profit. Had there been a loss, you would again add it back. So what does that give us so far? So far, 131,000. All right, the next thing we uh, need, the other thing we need to adjust for, uh, as again, I mentioned briefly in the first lecture, uh, is adjustment for things like inventories, receivables. You know, our turnover, our sales were a million, but that's not the cash we'll have received uh, because receivables last year was 75,000, so presumably we've had that cash this year as well. Uh, but at the end of this year, the receivables are 83,000. So we've not had the cash from some of this year's sales. So we need to adjust for that. And similarly, uh, inventories. Here we've bought more inventory and similarly payables. We adjust for changes in the working capital. And by that I mean inventories, receivables and payables.
Let's look at each in turn. Inventories have increased. There's been an increase in inventories. It went from 81 to 90, so an increase of 9,000. And surely if you're buying extra inventory, we buy more with less cash. We'll subtract. What about receivables? There's been an increase in receivables. Seventy-five up to eighty-three, an increase of eight thousand. So okay, we'll have received an extra seventy-five this year, but there's eighty-three we haven't received. And so again, if customers are owing us more, we've received less cash. Uh, cash itself, ignore for the moment, the whole purpose of the statement is to explain the change in the cash. Uh, go to liabilities. What about payables? There's been an increase in payables. Sixty-nine up to twenty-seven, so it's increased by what twenty-eight thousand. And again, shall we add or subtract? Well, surely if we're taking longer to pay our uh, suppliers, the longer they take, the more cash we've got. So we'll add the increase in payables. Here they were all increases. Uh, had uh, inventories decreased, we'd have had more cash. You'd have added. And similarly, if receivables had decreased, we'd have had more cash you'd have added. So it could be either way. Uh, the tax payable, for the moment irrelevant, we deal with uh, the tax. We're required to show it as a separate item. So, having adjusted for inventories, receivables and payables, what do I come to now? I better use my calculator. 131,000. Minus 9,000, minus 8,000, plus 28,000. Uh, I get 142,000. Uh, and that 142 is called the cash generated from operations. Okay, so the cash generated from operations is 142,000. Uh, however, we are, although that's the cash profit, we are required to show uh, three ways in which that money was spent. Some of that money was paid out as interest. Uh, how much? Well, if you look at the statement of profit or loss, you can see the interest was a thousand. So, a thousand outflow of cash, and that has to be shown as a separate item. What else did we do with that money? Some of it was paid out as dividends. And if you look over the page at note three, we're told the dividends paid during the year was 16,000. And finally, what else did we do with that money? Some of it was paid out as tax. Now here, uh, we're not told how much tax was paid. Now I know in the statement of profit or loss, now, there's a tax there of 39,000. Well, that's the tax expense for the year. That doesn't necessarily mean we actually paid 39,000 this year. Because look at the uh, statements of financial position. We were already owing 30,000 at the end of last year. At the end of this year, we're still owing 20,000. Well, in a minute, we'll actually calculate how much tax must have been paid. However, I will do, uh, we'll do the workings in a moment, but we are required to show those three items separately, those three payments of cash, 
cash generated for operations are less. Any interest paid, dividends paid, tax paid. All right, so I can finish that bit. Let's look at the tax paid. If you want to do a little tea account, I don't really need one. Because I do know that at the beginning of the year, we were owing 30,000. Look at last year's statement of financial position, the end of last year, so beginning of this year, we were owing 30,000. Uh, what was the expense for this year? The charge for this year Look in the East End of Profit or Loss, it's 39,000. And so, if we'd paid nothing at all this year, we'd still be owing 69,000. Obviously, anything we have paid this year will reduce what's still owing. Well, how much is owing at the end of the year? Look at this year's statement of financial position. We're owing 20,000. Well, think about it. We were owing 30. We build another 39, that's 69. Well, if we're only owing 20 at the end of the year, we must have paid the difference of 49,000. So it's just a bit of workings. Again, had the uh, question actually told us, had there been a note saying, oh, tax paid, 39, stick it straight in. Here, I did need those bit of workings, but now I can complete that first bit. Forty-nine thousand. And what does that leave us with? The net cash from operating activities. Is what we've got as far as 142. So minus a thousand uh, interest, 16,000 dividends, 49,000 tax. The final figure, 76,000. Okay, now that's where most of the work's needed. Uh, the other two weddings will take me many minutes, hopefully. <coughs> but most of the work. And the bit you really must learn and make sure you're happy with is arriving at that 76. Anyway, let's continue. Same statement, obviously, but the next heading, if you look back, is the cash flows from investing activities. As again, I said uh, briefly in the uh, first lecture, this is cash received and paid, uh, essentially, for selling and buying non-current assets. Now, part of it, if we put straight down, if you look at note two at the bottom, during the year there had been sales of non-current assets for 30,000. So, there's a cash receipt. We've received 30,000 from the sale of non-current assets. It's an inflow, it's a receipt. If there's a payment, I'll put it as I've been doing before in brackets. What else though? Clearly the outflow is the purchase of any non-current assets. But here I'm not told. I mean, I know we bought some. It must have done. Look at the uh, statements of financial position. The non-current assets went up a lot. We must have bought some. And had there been a note telling me how much we spent, we'd put the figure straight in. Here we're not told. So again, I'll need a bit of workings. I'll do um, a little tier count. Non-current assets. 
it's actually a little bit of revision. It's not nothing specific to cash flow statements. Uh, but on those statements of financial position, we know what they were last year. We know what they were uh, this year. And no, they haven't told us cost and accumulated depreciation. Those figures must be the net book values or the carrying values. And at the start of the year, the net book value, the balance, was 410,000. Why will it have changed? Well, it'll have changed for three reasons. One is obviously you bought some more acquisitions. That's what I'm trying to find out. Another reason it'll have changed is depreciation. You know, that 410 is the net book value. We'll have depreciated this year. That'll bring the net book value down. And of course, we know what the depreciation was this year. What was it? Note one, 40,000. Why else will it have changed? Yeah, it'll, uh, the 410 would have gone down if we'd sold any. And remember, since the 410 is the net book value at the start of the year, sell any and the net book value will fall. Note two, the net book value of what we sold was 20. There's one other reason why, in general, they could have changed. There could have been a revaluation, which would increase the value. However, remember, had there been a revaluation, there'd be a revaluation reserve. There isn't one here. There hasn't been a revaluation. Now, finally, of course, we know what the balance carried forward was. At the end of the year, it was 545. And so the figure I'm looking for, the cost of the acquisitions, must be the missing figure to make the account balance. So what is the missing figure? This side adds up to 605,000. The missing figure is going to be zero 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 five nine hundred and ninety five thousand. That was the missing figure, the balancing figure. That's what I spent, or we spent this year, on the purchase of um, non current assets. Now, what I've done there really is revision. That sort of thing could be asked of you anywhere. That's not specifically a statement of cash flow's problem. It's just that here, since we weren't told the figure, well, I've no choice. I had to calculate it ourselves. But now I can go back to the statement. Purchase of non current assets, 195,000. It's a cash outflow, a payment, it's negative. Remember, the only other thing that would go into this heading would be any interest or dividends received. However, there's no mention uh, here of uh, receiving any interest or dividends, so irrelevant. I mean, you don't normally put, hey, items where it's zero. So, the net total under that heading the net cash from financing activities, sorry, from investing activities. Is an outflow of 165. All right, we're almost there. The final heading is cash flows from financing activities. And for financing, 
what we're looking for is any cash from issuing shares and any changes in long-term borrowings. So let's have a look. Shares. Last year, share capital was 100,000. This year, they clearly have issued shares. Share capital is 150 and share premium 20. And so, uh, we've got an uh, issue of shares. Now, although in the Stems Financial Position, we've had enough in an earlier lecture about how we have to separate between share capital, share premium. In the statement of cash flows, I don't care what we actually call it, I want to know the cash received. And so the total cash received must have been, well, 50,000 share capital went up, in addition 20,000 went to share premium. So 70,000. Are there any long-term borrowings? No, they're not. But have there been any long-term borrowings? If the amount owing has gone up, it means we've raised money, we've received cash. If any long-term borrowings have fallen, it we must have repaid borrowing, we've paid cash. Um, so here, the net cash from financing activities. is 70,000 an inflow. Now we can look at the total, and let's hope it all works. We received 76 from operating activities, paid out 165, uh, investing activities, received 70, investing activities. Here, there's a net decrease in cash uh, of 19,000 and of course that should explain the change in the cash balances so what was the cash at the start of the year Look at last year's uh, stem to financial position, it was 64,000. And therefore, what should it be at the end of the year? It was 64, we've paid out a net 19, uh, and so it should be 45,000. And yes, it is. So there we are. A couple of little things before I stop this lecture. First of all, I did say at the beginning, you can't be asked to prepare a full statement, but any bit of that you can be tested on. Uh, and so the only way to make sure you've got it is, is for us to go through a full statement as we have done. But any um, individual bit, and of course, uh, I did stress, make sure you've learned the three headings and you know basically what goes under each heading. Uh, secondly, the cash at the start end of the year, uh, I said before, strictly it's cash and cash equivalents, I'm not really worried about that. But the cash is the total of all cash balances. Um, you see here, it is possible that they might show cash at bank and petty cash separately. Well, cash at start is the total of the two. Uh, also, you might find that under assets there is a cash balance as there is here, but there might also be a bank overdraft under current liabilities. Well, it's the net of the two. The cash at the start is the total of all cash balances, and similarly the cash at the end. Uh, thirdly, the accounting standard, which is what gives the uh, layout for this, does allow one bit to be shown separately, uh, differently rather, and that's dividend paid. Uh, dividend paid, you have the choice 
normally, and I think best, and easiest to remember, is we subtract it from the cash generated from operations as I did. So you have those three things. You're looking for interest paid, dividend paid, tax paid. However, the accounting standard does allow you, instead of showing it there, to show it under financing activities. So you wouldn't have had the final total, just the total of those two headings. But instead of subtracting 16,000 under the heading cash flows from operating activities, instead of subtracting 16 there, we could have subtracted the 16 as part of cash flows from financing activities instead. Okay, very last of all, and the reason there's going to have to be one more lecture on this is that the accounting standard talks about getting net cash from operating activities in two ways. The way we've done it, and the normal way, is to take the profit And adjust it. And this is called the indirect method. Take the profit and adjust it. However, there is another method called the direct method, which we're actually a lot less worried about in the exam. But in the next lecture, I will explain what the direct method is and what goes with it.